If push comes to shove and I have no options left, where I can't work and I don't have, I still have my financial debts and all of that, I would just kill myself, and then my problems are over. For a long time, I referred to it as my Godiva plan, because it involved me putting. Uh, at that time, initially, it was an eight-hour videotape, now it would be a, a DVD porno on the TV, and and get a couple a couple of pounds of Godiva chocolate, and eat myself into a into a diabetic stupor, because I am diabetic. And that would hopefully kill me, and then whoever finds my body would be able to get whatever Godiva chocolate was left. Meet Joe Fleischaker, the biggest star in film and TV. The only way to see him today is to make a pilgrimage to his tiny basement apartment. I basically, I'm living the life of a, of a recluse here in my apartment. Uh, it's a jail that I built for myself, but it took many years to build it, and I worked on it very hard. The decor is a mix of past successes and odd necessities. Both serve a utility for his survival, but things haven't always been this way. At one time, he was literally the biggest and most charismatic star to fill both television and film screens. Because of this eclectic mix of size and charm, he was cast in larger-than-life roles in Woody Allen's radio days and appeared in a dozen episodes of The David Letterman Show in the 80s and into the 90s. I brought you something for Father's Day. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I love you, Donnie. And I love you, Dad. And the cats in the cradle and the suit. What part is this that I'm showing now? That's this you... is uh, where I played a Hasidic rabbi in the movie A Stranger Among Us, uh, starring Melanie Griffith. I was in the theaters recently. But you're the king of the B-movies. You're the king I, of the... I, I have done a lot of B-movies, yes. He appeared in many Hollywood projects but would become best known for his work with legendary movie company Troma Studios Films, appearing in more than 10 feature films directed by studio head Lloyd Kaufman. Well, it's a low-budget film house, an independent film company that's been around a while. There are very few production companies that have following that know their work. But when you see a Troma movie, you, you sort of know it. I'm Tony Luke Jr., and I've been known to have some of the best cheesesteaks in Philly. And like Joe, I'm an actor who has been known for my bigger-than-life roles myself. But one day I just couldn't take it anymore and I knew something had to be done. I had to make a change. I ballooned up to 365 pounds. And as of today, I've lost over 130. And when I heard about Joe's situation, I knew something had to be done and fast. Well, I don't know what my peak is because okay. uh, I don't often have a scale that can go that high. Mm. The highest that I recorded here with the scale that I have here was five and a quarter. Now I'm about 470. Because of my weight gain, I, I don't fit in the shower, so I have to get a, a professional in here once a week to uh, swab me down. While being a bigger guy may have helped Joe's movie career, it has gotten so out of hand that now it's a matter of life or death. And again, this has something to do with the uh, reaching that point of no return that I have trouble with because one of the reasons why I don't allow myself to get there is because when I get there I'm too depressed to do anything. I can honestly say that I'm still basically a survivor and given legitimate opportunities to improve myself and to get things better, I would, I would love to do that. But after seeing there are other people like him, like me, who have reached the point of no return and fought back from the edge, he is ready to take another shot. He is ready to put the time and effort in to get fitter and healthier and back on the movie scene. Talent that big should never go to waste. Joe is ready to be a big star again.